Hi, I'm Jesse. Thanks for watching JLS Comics. Today we're continuing to track the upcoming movie from Warner Media and DC Entertainment, an R-rated deep dive character study into the one man who's earned arch enemy status for Batman, the immovable object to his unstoppable force, the chaos to his order. It's Romeo. Well, not really. That was the production title. The Joker, of course, which will be in theaters on the 4th of October, 2019, is the subject of our video. Now that the Empire article's out, let's talk about everything we know so far for this movie, despite not having seen it myself. I'll give spoiler notice just in case as we go over character details and potential plot points for the film. So fair warning. And with that said, let's jump right into it. The Joker, directed by Todd Phillips, boasts an all-star cast seemingly perfect for this type of film. Joaquin Phoenix as the titular character whose real name is Arthur Fleck. Zazie Beetz as Sophie Dumond, and Robert De Niro as a talk show host named Murray Franklin. Francis Conroy as Arthur's mother named Penny Fleck. Then we have Dante Pereira Olsen as a young Bruce Wayne and his dad, Thomas Wayne, played by Brett Cohen. We've got a full trailer back in April of 2019, but until now, the studio has been relatively quiet on marketing. In fact, Empire's article is the first time Joaquin Phoenix has done press for the movie, so the magazine article might be an indication that the marketing campaign is going to ramp up now that we're three months out from the film's actual release date. Early on in the development stage, filmmakers went on record to cite their inspiration for this movie. It was meant to set the tone and expectation of what this movie would really be about and feel like. And looking back, they were perfect references. The four primary influences are Alan Moore's The Killing Joke graphic novel, the late 70s, early 80s Martin Scorsese movies Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, and The King of Comedy. Despite this reference to Alan Moore's story, which told the story of a failed comedian and his descent through the Red Hood and into becoming the Joker, Todd Phillips has stated that this is entirely their own story. They didn't pull this from any comic book arc. We didn't follow anything from the comic books, he said in the article, and people are going to be mad about it, he said. We're not doing the story of the Joker. We're doing the story of becoming the Joker. I believe the reference to Killing Joke comes from one particularly horrific scene in The Dark Knight Returns, which is another cited source of inspiration, with a studio audience and uh, some murders, and this would be the audience of Robert De Niro's Murray Franklin. The Empire article calls Murray the spiritual ancestor of the King of Comedies, Robert Rupkin. It also says only Robert De Niro could match Phoenix, so really it had to be De Niro. When Phillips and Scott Silver first approached DC with the story idea back in 2006 at an after party for his movie War Dogs, they presented it as being under a new banner. It would be called DC Black. It would feature standalone stories from all-star directors and cast separate completely separate from the DCEU. While that wasn't immediately approved, the studio did greenlight this particular project. There's a rumor that Thomas Wayne had an affair with a housekeeper at the estate named Penny Fleck, Penny got pregnant and had Arthur. It also appears that he has something called pseudobulbar affect, PSA, which is a disease that causes uncontrollable outbursts of laughter. Arthur tries to get jobs, settles on being the stand-up comedian in 1981 Gotham City. It's a time when rampant drug abuse and crime and dirtiness actually align with the New York City of that same time period. It's smart because this time period clearly differentiates it from the Nolan and Snyder films, both thematically and stylistically, so it's clear that it's its own thing entirely. The film is said to be intense, uncomfortable, and gritty in its realism. Thomas Wayne looking is looking to be running for mayor on his platform of cleaning up this mess of a city, and Arthur's trying to win the attention of his father, so it would then make sense why he'd be approaching the gates of Wayne Manor and seeing a young Master Bruce. Arthur's mom has a row mental health issues, and and he's her full-time caretaker as he tries to make ends meet on the streets. At one point, he's a clown-clad sign flipper with makeup evoking the horrific pout and style of serial killer John Wayne Gacy. It looks like Zazie Beetz lives in his building, is the object of his desire, and she turns him down. At some point, he gets a gig on Live with Murray, and it bombs horrifically, and he's publicly ridiculed. It's all of this, losing his job, that contribute to his broken mind. Arthur kills a couple Wall Street investors, one rumor goes, and inspires a resist movement against the well the elite of Gotham. You can actually see references to resist rioters on the IMDb casting page. Supposedly, and this is strictly rumor, it's during these riots that Thomas and Martha Wayne are shot, thus birthing Batman. These thoughts are echoed in the soundtrack for the movie, which include the likes of Benny and the Jets and Smile and classic Frank Sinatra tune like That's Life. This movie is not going to be like any other comic book movie that's come before it. It relies on psychology and realism over the fantastical and CGI. It's not an action comedy. It's 
it's not any type of true adaptation. It's not a love story or a heist movie. It's a gritty psychological thriller. It'll go from sympathy and support on our part to a breaking point where we, the watchers, can really no longer support Affleck. But I wonder if it will make that line sort of blurry and up to each viewer in terms of when they can no longer support him and what he's doing. And that will reflect on ourselves and how we view others and our own ethical and moral codes. So that'll be interesting point to look out for. I'm confident in saying that this Joker movie will be an Academy contender for Joaquin Phoenix. Everything I've seen and heard up to this point points just to that, and even a couple test screenings support this notion. Phillips will direct Phoenix and De Niro to the heights of Scorsese's best. Well, that's really what they're gonna have to do since they're coloring so far outside of their comic book movie genre lines. And because of that though, and that it doesn't really follow the quote unquote MCU formula, so to speak, it may not appeal to all comic book movie lovers. You have to know what you're getting into when you sit down to watch this film. People have long argued that the Joker is best as a mystery, and I understand that, but this is one version. It's Philip's version and not the story of the comic book character. This is a cautionary tale about the depths and lengths to which society can drive a person. How you don't start out this way, but all it takes is one bad day. Well, let's continue this conversation down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on this movie? What have you seen and what have you been able to read so far? Are you excited for it? Are you skipping it? Let me know. That's it, my friends. For this video, I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.